So that's Robert Owen's basic perspective on how to put together something now. Thank you again. Do you generally like to record the vocals at the end of the track or do you like to record the vocals sometimes in the middle of the project with all the MIDI stuff around? It depends. It depends uh, whether I have access to the vocalist when I'm working. Um, I mean, quite often uh, you you have to, I, I mean, I, Robert, how mm. do you find it with, with vocals? Do you prefer to work with kind of ideas in, in progress or um, what do you find complete tracks? Two different ways. Sometimes um, um, a lot of projects that I've been getting lately, um, the producer actually just sends it. I get it everybody's working through email now, so a lot of um, producers actually will send me a link to a track and I'll set it home and um, I'll develop a, a vocal thought and idea on what to do and then I'll just go in the studio um, with a programmer or engineer and I'll lay a vocal pattern and then I'll send it back to the producer um, and then he sets and, and develops what his um, I guess um, his definitive thought of a mix that he feels is right for the, uh, the track but I usually leave them with a whole set of ideas and then sometimes I come in and I work directly with a producer and which is nice because then they'll you, you you allow the producer a chance to pull out something out of you as a vocalist that you might have not normally thought about doing as a vocalist, which is good. So you know it's the two different ways of doing it. I mm. think. Yeah. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> good. Thank good. You. Excellent. Thank you. Got a question? Um, based on the environment we're in at the moment, mm. would you say that you could get production quality recording? 
or would you take that audio file and clean it up when you get home or I mean how what's the next there are um, you know there are there are things that you can do in order to you know remove some of the background noise that we've got here obviously it's not a perfect recording environment with sort of people being sat in the room and what have you but um, but the thing is I think vocal recordings it <laughs> I'm sure there'll be many people who disagree with me about this but um, it's really about the kind of vibe for me that you get from a, a vocalist and it almost doesn't matter where that recordings come from you know I mean, I've, 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 s I've heard records released that people have recorded on their iPhones you know like kind of vocals because they, they've just captured something yeah. right there and then you know in, in a moment like it's they've been all in the way you treat it I mean some exactly. people have recorded my, my um, um, answering phone message mm. and made a track out of that <laughs> 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 um, some of the earlier house stuff in the 80s was done right in living rooms or basements um, I, uh, some uh, one of the earlier tracks that um, Fingers Inc. Bring Down the Walls. Uh, I remember performing at Paradise Garage and, and we would sit on the stage paranoid like they're going to hear the mistake, they're going to hear where the doorbell ring. <laughs> and the doorbell would ring and the people in the party would be like, ah, mm -hmm. like it was an effect. And it was like, so um, I remember giving um, Larry LeVan tracks off a cassette back in the day. We used to use pitch control cassette decks, even splice editing. We splice pause button edited before the whole splicing thing really came into series with a lot of people off of pitch control um, um, cassette decks. So um, it's all in the way you take um, any instrument and retreat it um, according to you, your um, viewpoint on a production of what you want to convey as far as a production. Absolutely, yeah, and I, I'd, I'd say, you know, that's it's you know it's partly a production decision and um, but I mean there are you know certainly there's there's so much usable material within this you know um, which you know I'll certainly take home and you know work on. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Is it wise to use a tool like Melodyne? Um, he's also said that he can't sing very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean that that does I've kind of. I've never used melody. It makes me think of something, you know, like like those things like auto tune. You know, it's, uh, it's all over the charts. How do you feel about those kind of? It's it's great. I believe everybody can sing. It's about you just being comfortable with yourself. I think the problem with a lot of singers is that they they come in and they want to emulate what they've heard other people do, and it's about understanding your own tonality and just giving that into a track you know if you just as well as you can hold a conversation you can sing is you know it's, it's about someone just showing you where the root of your tone is and you building off of that you strengthening strengthening the higher part and the lower part of that and learning to sing from the diaphragm and you know instead of your nose you know a lot of people it comes out through the nose but once you start breathing through the diaphragm and you know projecting it from that but the basic thing is just <coughs> understanding the root of your tone and building and strengthening off of that. Mm. I think with things like Melodyne and, and Autotune as well from a production standpoint I think they are a last resort rather than a go-to or they should be mm. at least. Um, I mean they can be quite effective you know in terms of I mean you know if perhaps you're not so you know uh, not the most natural singer, should we say? Then um, I think they're great for you know Melodyne's great for constructing harmonies and things like that. But um, but yeah, I think in some in some cases it's used a little bit lazily, and mm -hmm. um, and it should be the last resort if you are going to use it. Uh, I mean I've used it, you know. But uh, but if you've got a great singer, then you don't need to use it anyway. So. <laughs> At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. 
you upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work. So basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.